The Miracle on Ice, one of the greatest sporting events of the 20th century. A triumph for the USA and a triumph for the style of play favored by coach Herb Brooks. Those guys had tremendous speed and skill. Larry Hendrickson was strength coach for the 1980 Olympic team. Was it the type of physical play we see today where guys are just blowing each other up? No, hardly at all. You watch the 80 game against the Russians. The United States did not try to go out and intimidate them by knocking their socks off. They were going to intimidate them by being stronger than them at the game of hockey. Today, these are the images that consume hockey. Violent hits that sideline NHL stars like Sidney Crosby and Mark Savard with concussions. Dangerous play has also filtered down to the youth level. Where hockey has the highest concussion rate in team sports, eclipsing even football. Kevin McLaughlin is an official at USA Hockey, the governing body of the sport. Peewee hockey today is not the peewee hockey we played when we were kids. What type of play do you see now? The focus on intimidation, the focus on physicality, ignoring the puck and, and trying to knock somebody down, kind of football on ice. I see too much where kids pound other kids and have success with it. Shut up, Wasserman, you little Youth coaches sometimes set a hostile tone. Right now, you're playing like a bunch of bulls. Don't let them bully you around. Get in their face. You're running away from them. If you get hit, you go take a number, and then you go to wreck that guy the next time. You either want to play or you don't. I would say at least two or three times a year since you know, the last couple of years, we've had kids miss time because of concussions. Jim Munchell is a hockey dad from outside Philadelphia. His son Shane was kept out of play for almost two months after suffering a concussion in January. I got hit from behind, and since I was on one foot, I spun backwards and hit my head on the boards. And then he started having convulsions, and that's when I flipped out and ran out, jumped on the board, jumped over the boards, and at that point he was like gasping for air, so it was kind of scary. Now USA Hockey is trying to rein in the culture, starting with a major rule change that will be voted on in June a ban on body checking in games until age 13, the bantam level. Currently, body checking starts at age 11, the peewee level. Body contact are collisions when players are battling for pucks, when players are racing to a puck. You still allow body contact, but just not that overt, aggressive, intimidating action. Dr. Michael Stewart is co-director of the Sports Medicine Center at the Mayo Clinic. His youngest son, Mark, plays for the NHL's Atlanta Thrashers. I don't think that legal body checking in games is the root of all evil. However, when legal body checking is allowed, sometimes players don't have the skills to give a check or receive a check, and I think there's a higher risk of more dangerous, unanticipated hits. But down in the grassroots where tradition reigns, the idea of limiting body checking to peewee practices can be a tough sell even among the concussed. I just hope to not have a headache uh, the rest of my life. Anthony Tabery, now 16, hasn't played since suffering two concussions a month apart two years ago. He has trouble concentrating, and the former A student is now struggling in school. But he's against the proposed rule change. I think that there's other ways to stop concussions, just being more aware as a players and coaches. Uh, of the symptoms of concussions. Every shift we're bringing it. You come over this wall, it's going to war. Ryan Doyle coaches a bantam team in Pennsylvania and worries that if checking is not allowed until that level, players won't learn how to protect themselves and it could actually be more dangerous. You're talking about guys that not only want to hit, but you're talking about guys that want to make hits that hurt. And that's a big difference. They don't believe in the data. They don't follow the logic. They don't under understand the complexity of the situation. They're unwilling to change the culture. It's the same resistance Minnesota hockey officials encountered a few years ago when they set out to reform the culture in that state through coach training and new rules. Hal Terse is the head of coaching for Minnesota hockey. It was an awareness by some of the senior leaders of hockey in Minnesota, um, Herb Brooks. Um, oh, he was part of the conversation? Oh, yeah. 
and we just didn't like the direction that the youth game was going. The centerpiece of the reform package was introduced in 2005, two years after Brooks died. It's called the Fair Play Point, which rewards clean play and counts in the league standings, just like points earned for each win. So every team starts the game with one point, a fair play point. And the team keeps that point as long as its players don't end up in the penalty box often. The threshold is just 12 minutes per game at the peewee level. Coaches must also That's behave. A call. That's a terrible call. That's a terrible call. Coaches don't want these penalties. They want kids doing these things. They don't want the checks from behind. They don't want the head contact. It's hard for Minnesota hockey officials to know if concussions and other injuries are down because of the fair play point. The data does not exist. But they do believe it's made the game safer and kept some kids from quitting hockey. All because of a rule that costs no money but put a price on bad behavior. Last year our kids missed first place because we lost three or three fair play points. This year the Minneapolis area team that Chris Jetty helps coach finished first in its local league after keeping its points. We kind of told them, you know what, it's it's your responsibility. You can't be selfish and make dumb plays. Minnesota is the only state with a fair play point, though even there, it's yet to be adopted on the high school level. We would like to see it expanded even better in the state of Minnesota, but nationally and internationally, especially in the United States and Canada. I can see other programs adopting it for sure. We need to get back to where kids want to play with the puck instead of focusing on just hitting or focusing on being hit. But the U.S. won a silver in the Olympics and then won the World Juniors. Yeah, two years ago. So is the model really broken? Uh, it's not as good as we can be. We can be better. How would Herb Brooks feel about these measures? I think he'd be all over this. He'd think this would be great. Why? Uh, just because it, it's good for kids.